Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Irish political parties. Some of you may have noticed that my voice is sounding a little bit different this episode. This is because I've decided to try the revolutionary idea of putting the mic somewhat close to my face. I feel like that might kind of change the audio quality a little bit, so we'll see. I'm curious to find out if it's better, if you guys like it, or if it's terrible, I can just go back to my old way of recording. But anyway, let's get on with the episode. So today's episode was requested by Samuel Hatch and Sam Volkers on YouTube, along with someone on my request forum. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the request forum in the description. I currently have requests to do Polish parties, Japanese parties, Turkish parties, Danish parties, Greek parties, Serbian parties, South Korean parties, Moroccan parties, Chilean parties, German parties, and many more. So in order to understand the two largest political parties in Ireland, it's important to briefly go over the Irish Civil War. So after the War for Independence, the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed. The treaty turned Ireland from a part of the United Kingdom into a dominion which was mostly independent from England, but still in the Commonwealth, and with the English monarchy still as the de jure ruler of the country. It also partitioned Ireland with the six majority Protestant Irish counties in the north, continuing to be under British rule. The treaty proved to be very controversial among the IRA, some arguing it would give at least some freedom and the potential for a future united Ireland, while others argued it would just replace one form of repression with another. Six months after the treaty was signed, the pro- and anti-treaty factions of the IRA went to war with each other. Ultimately, the pro-treaty side would win, but Ireland was divided after the conflict, and it led to the two largest parties today. I also do want to be clear, I am talking about the parties found in the Republic of Ireland, and won't focus too much on Northern Irish politics. I highlighted some of the major Northern Irish parties in an episode on British parties, so if you are curious about them, you can check that out. Since many parties in the Republic of Ireland do still operate in Northern Ireland, I will also mention if they do throughout the episode. Before we get to the parties, first let's talk about the Irish legislature. The lower house in the Arrakis is the Dáil Éireann. There are 160 TDs, or Dáil deputies, who are elected from 39 constituencies found throughout Ireland. Each constituency sends between 3 to 5 TDs, and TDs are elected via single transferable vote, which is a form of ranked choice voting, or put in not political science terms, it's a system where voters can rank their candidates. Notably, whichever TD has been elected by the Dáil, to be the Can Curla, or pretty much the Speaker of the Dáil, gets automatically elected. TDs will vote on rules and regulations, will elect the Taoiseach, or essentially the Prime Minister and their cabinet, declare war, and start the process of amending the Constitution. Also, in case you couldn't tell, I don't speak Irish, so sorry if my pronunciations are very bad. My Irish great-great-grandfather is probably rolling in his grave right now. Uh, Ireland is very big on preserving the Irish language and using it in political terminology, so unfortunately you're going to hear me mispronounce Irish a lot throughout the episode. The upper house is the Shaned Aaron. The Shaned has 60 senators. 11 senators are nominated directly by the Taoiseach. 43 are elected from five different vocational panels, where other elected officials vote for candidates that have experience in a certain vocation or profession. So for example, one of the vocation panels is administration. So people elected from this panel are supposed to have some experience working in the government. Finally, three are elected from graduates from the National University of Ireland, while another three are elected from Dublin University graduates. The Shaned is considered a much weaker body than the Dáil, largely serving to review laws passed by the Dáil. It can delay laws and offer up new laws to be voted in the Dáil, but cannot prevent any law from passing on its own. Ireland is also a member of the EU, sending 13 members to EU Parliament. Its MEPs are also elected via single transferable vote from three constituencies. And then finally, I'll just recommend a podcast I listened to in preparation for this episode. It's Joe.ie State of Us 2020 election. It covered the last all election in 2020, so in some ways it's a bit outdated, and they certainly have a left-leaning tilt in their analysis and criticism. But it's not a million years ago, so most of the information from it is still relevant, and it gives a good insight into Irish politics and how election campaigns go in Ireland. So the first party we will talk about is Fianna Fáil, or Soldiers of Destiny, which is a pretty raw name, I must confess. Fianna Fáil was founded by those opposed to the Anglo-Irish Treaty, and started off as Irish Republican, or essentially believed in creating a united Irish Republic and leaned left. However, it has shifted over the years to embrace more center-right positions, 
and today is generally defined as conservative, although with Irish nationalistic undertones. It historically dominated from 1933 to 1973. After 1973, it started to lose some elections, but still kept its dominant place until the 2011 election, which saw the party for the first time drop to third place and win less than 20% of the vote. It's made a bit of a recovery since then, and currently is the largest party in the ruling coalition. While it historically had a lot of working class support, it today is seen as not really having a class identity, and mostly just being a party for those whose families historically opposed the Anglo-Irish Treaty, and with more support in rural areas broadly in the East and among older voters. It also does technically have a Northern Ireland branch, but it's irrelevant to Northern Irish politics. It currently has 37 TDs, 21 senators, and sends two members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Renew Europe group. It is currently led by Michal Martin, a TD from Cork and the current Taoiseach. Now normally I would start talking about the policies of the party, but I'm actually going to hold off on that for a bit and instead talk about Fianna Fáil's traditional rival, Fianna Gael, or Family of the Irish. Fianna Gael was formed in the 30s from a merger of the pro-treaty faction of the IRA, a short-lived conservative party, and a group known as the Blue Shirts, which I'll get to a little bit later. Fianna Gael has traditionally been seen as right of Fianna Fáil, but today it occupies a center-right conservative position similar to Fianna Fáil. While Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael supposedly are rivals, they since 2020 have served in a government together, and before that in 2016, Fianna Fáil helped propped up a Fianna Gael-led government. It was sort of shocking considering the historical rivalry between the two. Fianna Gael's support base is considered to be a collection of those broadly in Western Ireland, especially in County Mayo, in Southern Dublin, those whose families have ties to the pro-treaty IRA, and among Irish Protestants. Fianna Gael supporters also tend to be younger and richer than Fianna Fáil supporters. It currently has 33 TDs, 16 senators, and sends five members to EU Parliament, the most out of any party, who sits in the European People's Party group. It is currently led by Leo Varadkar, a TD from Dublin, Minister of Enterprise, Trade, and Employment is the Tondeste, which is essentially like the Deputy Prime Minister, and Taoiseach before Martin took power in 2020. So both Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are center-right conservative parties. So what's the difference between them? Well, if you ask those on the left and or those of the younger generation, they would probably tell you there isn't really a difference between them, as they both support a free market or mixed economy, they both are made up of political elites, they are moderate on social issues for the most part, they are both currently led by people who support a united Ireland but oppose the use of violence to get it, and they both are pro-EU. However, there are some differences between the two. Fianna Gael is seen as being a bit more gung-ho on privatization and less taxes, while Fianna Fáil is seen as more protectionist and a bit more supportive of a welfare state. Fianna Gael is also slightly seen as more liberal on social issues, with several socially liberal legislation being passed under Fianna Gael governments, such as recently the legalization of abortion after a referendum. Civil war politics also has affected issues regarding the Irish nation, with Fianna Fáil seen as more nationalistic and a pushing slightly harder for a united Ireland. Finally, while both are pro-EU, they see Ireland's role in the world in different lights. Fianna Fáil believes Ireland should continue as a country that is geopolitically neutral, and not aligned with NATO while still being friendly with NATO states. However, Fianna Gael is more supportive of an Ireland that is geopolitically aligned with the West and a part of NATO. Besides these differences, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are really seen as one and the same. They both occupy the same position ideologically, and while they are bitter rivals during election time and at points in the doll, they do at the end of the day agree on most issues. This has led to a lot of criticism that both parties are made up of political elites and the rich, are elitist, serve the interest of big businesses, don't offer any real solutions for Ireland, and are corrupt. It seems Fianna Fáil is looked at as a bit more corrupt since they have been in government for most of Ireland's history, and Fianna Gael is seen as a bit more of a party for the rich since its support base is wealthier, but overall both accusations are leveled at them. The fact that they are currently in government together also doesn't help to spell the accusations that they are essentially the same party, but in different colors and with different faces. Fianna Fáil specifically tends to be criticized for being a party that doesn't really offer anything revolutionary. Fianna Fáil's rule in Ireland was characterized by stagnation, and preferring if 
Ireland almost remained in a bubble. Fianna Fáil is also partially blamed for the 2008 economic downturn in Ireland, owing largely to Fianna Fáil's Taoiseach, Brian Cohen's policies. By the end of his rule, he was characterized by several news outlets as the worst Taoiseach in Irish history. Fianna Fáil before 2011 and after 1932 had won the most votes every single election, but in the 2011 election it dropped down to third place. While it did get the most seats, if you include the Con Corla, in the 2020 election, opinion polls right now show it looks likely to drop and lose support next election. Fianna Fáil is also criticized by Irish Republicans for not pushing for United Ireland enough, and there's apparently a stereotype among Fianna Gael supporters that Fianna Fáil supporters are all troublemakers. Fianna Gael, on the other hand, has been criticized more so for its pro-treaty ties. Since the Anglo-Irish Treaty gave several important concessions to the British, and Britain gave support to the pro-treaty side in the Civil War, pro-treaty politicians were, and still today, are often criticized for being pro-British and traitors to Ireland. Fianna Gael supporters are also sometimes referred to as West Brits by those hostile towards the party. Fianna Gael's ties with the Blue Shirts are also controversial. The Blue Shirts have a disputed history, with some seeing them as a group that protected pro-treaty politicians from violent Republicans, while others viewed them as fascists, with their leader later going on to fight with Franco in the Spanish Civil War. Fianna Fáil supporters apparently stereotype them as being stuffy and disconnected from the average person. And then finally, Vradkar has been criticized as being an unfeeling politician, who has dismissed tragedies brought before him when he was in charge, and of deflecting blame. Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are currently in government with Cometos Glass, or the Green Party, it is an environmentalist party, formed from environmental activists in the 80s. It has grown over the years from a fringe party to a party that has been able to command a decent chunk of the electorate, getting 7% of the vote last election, the highest it has ever received. Its support base is mostly found in and around Dublin, and it seems its supporters tend to be younger and make more money than average. It does operate in Northern Ireland, with a few local councillors being members of the party. It currently has 10 TDs, 4 senators, and sends 2 members to EU Parliament, who sit in the European Green slash Free Alliance group. It is currently led by Eamon Ryan, a TD from Dublin, Minister of Transport, and Minister of the Environment. The Greens' focus is largely on climate change. It wants future transport projects to remain sustainable, wants to make 20% of Irish farms organic by 2030, wants to plant more trees in Ireland, supports a carbon tax, wants to prevent animals from being in transit for over 8 hours, and wants to reduce bureaucratic red tape around renewable energy projects. The Greens are a center-left party, so it embraces progressive economic and social policies. It wants more women to enter politics, wants to build more affordable houses to reduce homelessness, supports implementing a site value tax, backs universal basic income, and wants there to be a constitutional amendment that ensures housing as a human right. It also seeks to promote town centers as livable and thriving spaces, supports more autonomy at the local level, and argues that raising the GDP shouldn't be the sole goal of the Irish government. The Green Party's big problem is that it's divided between two antagonistic wings. There is the old guard that favors the Green Party working in governments to promote environmentalism, and is willing to compromise, while the New Guard believes the Greens can't compromise on climate, and believes that working with traditional political elites is selling out. We've seen several town councillors leave the party to form their own rival political outfits, and several members have been kicked out for refusing to support the current government. The Green Party suffered a similar fate when it joined a Fianna Fáil government in 2007, which resulted in a lot of backlash and it being wiped out in the 2011 election. Opinion polls right now show it polling at only 1%, and it's unlikely next election will see the party grow, or even remain stable. I have also heard the Green Party referred to as Fine Gael on bikes, or in other words, a party for the rich that just barely pushes for environmental policies. So we now go to the opposition, and we'll start off with the most voted for party in 2020, Sinn Féin, or We Ourselves. Sinn Féin was originally formed in the early 20th century, and served as the main party pushing for Irish independence from Britain. However, it was divided after the Irish Civil War, and besides some small electoral successes, it was largely irrelevant from the mid-20s to the 70s. The Troubles in Northern Ireland saw the IRA emerge to fight off British rule in the North, and Sinn Féin served as the de facto political wing of the IRA. It at first was fairly marginal in the Republic of Ireland, mostly operating in the North, but dissatisfaction with the major parties has seen Sinn Féin rise to become a very important player in Irish politics. It embraces Irish republicanism, wanting to see a united Irish republic, but also is left-wing, embracing populist and democratic socialist ideals. 
It gets the most support along the border with Northern Ireland, and to a certain extent in Dublin. It, as stated previously, operates in the north, and actually is the largest party currently in Northern Ireland. It currently has 36 TDs, 4 senators, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the left of EU Parliament group. It is currently headed by Mary Lou Macdonald, a TD and former member of EU Parliament. Sinn Féin's goal for most of its history has been uniting Ireland. It argues that a referendum should be held to unite Ireland, wants to promote the Irish language, and argues that reconciliation must take place between the Unionist and Nationalist community of Northern Ireland. However, Sinn Féin has in recent years focused more and more on economic and housing issues. It wants to reduce the cost of childcare and schooling, wants to build more social housing, particularly in Irish-speaking areas, wants to ensure all Irish people are earning a livable wage, wants to ensure all people aged 16 to 24 have access to employment, and supports a Green New Deal. It also has started to focus more on women's issues, such as outlining the need for more support for women going through menopause, is pro-choice, and wants to make contraceptives free for all women. It also is supportive of self-determination in Palestine and Catalonia, has in recent years become more friendly with the EU while still opposing increased centralization and neoliberalism within the EU, and is generally socially progressive. Sinn Féin, while it has seen massive success in recent years, still isn't universally loved. People have criticized Sinn Féin for being too left-wing, being inexperienced in the Republic of Ireland, and suffering from infighting, and of having a sort of quasi-conspiratorial attitude towards the media, with it partially claiming any criticism they receive is just a part of a grand plot by the media to smear them. However, the big criticism that tends to follow them is their past links to violent Republican outfits like the IRA. I talked about this before in the British Political Parties episode, but I Irish Republicans in the Troubles killed a lot of people, and many admittedly were a part of the British Army, which could be justified in wartime, but they also killed hundreds of civilians, some of whom were killed simply for being Protestant. Sinn Féin has sought to distance itself from this past, and have claimed Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are hypocrites, since they also had ties to the old IRA. However, Sinn Féin only distanced itself from violent Republicans within the past 30-some years. The old guard is still very much present in the party. It sometimes will make connections between it and other dissident Republicans, and even today, you can sometimes find Sinn Féin members defend, or even joke, about IRA killings. Sinn Féin, despite this bad press, is doing very well in opinion polls, largely due to their focus on economic issues and their promise for radical change for Ireland. Next we go to the party in Locht Obre, or the Labour Party. Labour is a center-left social democratic party. It was founded in 1912 as the political wing of the trade unionist movement, and while never as powerful as Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael, it was almost always the third most voted for party, and served in several governments over the years. It was the main left-wing alternative to Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael up till the 2016 election. It still today is associated with the trade unions movement, getting a lot of union support. I would also suspect that it probably does better among older voters and civil servants, but I don't really have any data to back this up. It does best in Dublin or in southeastern Ireland. It currently has seven TDs and four senators. It is headed by Ivana Bayek a TD from Dublin, and former senator. The current president of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, while not currently a member, was formerly a member of the Labour Party and was elected in 2011 with Labour Party support. Labour is a pretty standard center-left party on economics and social issues. It supports progressive taxes, wants to raise corporate taxes, supports implementing a livable wage of 12.9 euros per hour, for all public servants, wants to make it easier to join a trade union, wants to maintain the state pension at 66, and supports pushing for a four-day work week. While it seems initially it was more socially conservative, it today is socially progressive, pushing for more LGBTQ rights, wants to improve women's health care, wants to crack down on racism, and wants to create more sustainable jobs. It also wants to do more to protect the Irish language, wants to build more houses to reduce the cost of rent, is pro-EU, but supports continued Irish neutrality, wants more regulations around gambling, and wants to make primary education free. Labour is the most established of the left-wing parties in Ireland, but it doesn't mean that it is well-received. Those right of it see it as wasteful spenders, and those left of it see it as not being left-wing enough. In 2011, it managed to win a historic 19.5% of the vote, becoming the second largest party in the Dáil, the best result it has ever achieved. However, it spent that government working with Fianna Gael, who introduced austerity measures that were widely disliked. Labour, the party that was supposed to represent the workers, was accused of selling out for political power and 
making life easier just for corporations. It dropped to just 6% of the vote in 2016, then dropped again to 4% of the vote in 2020. Current opinion polls show that they, again, look set to lose votes next election, due to Labour's reputation being ruined and being seen as a part of the political elite. This has led to some infighting in the party as they attempt to find a leader who can revitalize the party and, alternatively, find someone to blame for the party's misfortune. It also doesn't help that more and more left-wing alternatives have emerged in recent years to challenge Labour as the main left-wing force in the doll. One of these challengers is, and this is really just a shot in the dark, non donhale fle socialist or the Social Democrats. They are, as the name suggests, social democratic and center-left. They were formed in 2015 from ex-Labour TDs and current party leaders, Catherine Murphy and Roshan Shorthall. They wanted to form a social democratic party that was more principled than Labour and was more democratic internally. The Social Democrats today are about as strong as Labour and are pulling neck and neck with Labour in opinion polls. Although looking at the number of candidates they field, it seems Labour still has the advantage in terms of logistics and an organizational base. Labour has argued that both parties should merge together, which the Social Democrats have rejected, instead arguing that Labour members should just leave their party and join the Social Democrats. There's been some very catty insults back and forth at each other throughout the years, including this statement from a Labour spokesperson. Quote, We've welcomed their support for our legislation over the last year, and I'm sure the Labour Party will support their bills whenever they get around to introducing any. Which is, whew, that's catty. <laughs> The Social Democrats last election got the most support in and around Dublin, and to a lesser extent around Cork. It currently has six TDs. Shorthall also was previously the Minister of State for Primary Care before leaving the Labour Party. The Social Democrats back a lot of the same stuff Labour argues for. It wants a 12 euro minimum wage, wants to increase social welfare payments, wants to make primary and secondary education free, wants to reduce the cost of public transport, and wants to outright ban rent increases. It also supports more investment towards solar energy, opposes the state giving more funds to businesses that are financially profitable, wants more funds to go towards disability services, wants to build 10,000 more social houses and 10,000 more affordable houses, supports universal healthcare, and wants a crackdown on corruption. Next we go to People Before Profit slash Solidarity, or PBPS. PBPS is a coalition between the People Before Profit Party and the Solidarity Party, both influenced by left-wing, socialist, and Trotskyist ideas. The two parties have contested elections together since 2016, hoping to pull their resources together in order to get a better electoral result and more power in the doll. Last election, they did best in Dublin. Both parties do operate in Northern Ireland, although Solidarity is mostly irrelevant in the North. People Before Profit, meanwhile, does have a decent amount of support, sending one legislator to the Northern Irish Assembly and having several local councillors. PBPS currently has five TDs, the majority of whom are from People Before Profit. PBPS supports broadly socialistic ideas. People Before Profit talks about reducing the power of large agricultural producers and giving more power to small processors, wants more funds to go towards helping drug users rehabilitate into society, wants to nationalize the country's natural resources, banking sector, and construction companies, wants to end Ireland's status as a tax haven, is pro-choice, wants to expand paternity leave, and are opposed to water charges. Solidarity argues for similar policies, such as giving more power to unions, raising the minimum wage, introducing rent controls, and opposing NATO and neoliberal policies in the EU. They do differ on a united Ireland, though. People Before Profit argues for a united Ireland, calling for the removal of a border between the North and the South, arguing that the border was, quote, a counter-revolution, while Solidarity argues that both the North and South should join with England, Scotland, and Wales into a socialistic federation. We start to move to the much smaller parties with Aintu, or Unite. Aintu was founded by ex Sinn Féin TD, Pater Tobin, in 2019. Tobin clashed with the party over abortion, which eventually caused him to create his own political outfit. It combines populist arguments about wanting to rock the political establishment, social conservative attitudes towards abortion, and also Irish republicanism wanting a united Ireland. Economically, it does have some left-wing policies, such as greater workers' rights, wanting to reform the healthcare system, and does make a bit of a vague reference to economic inequality, but it also never says what it will do about this inequality. While Aintu does have a couple of local councillors in both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, it is mostly based around Tobin and his constituency of Meath West. Tobin is the party's single TD. The last party with a TD in the doll is Right to Change. Right to Change is based around former Independence for Change, which I'll talk about later, TD Joanne Collins. Collins founded the party in 2020, and the name comes from an Irish political movement, Right to Change, that was formed to fight for progressive reform in the country. 
Collins and the party are largely based around left-wing ideas, such as opposing neoliberalism in Ireland and reducing inequality. It's unclear what the future of the party holds. Unlike Aintu, Collins seems to be the only elected member, and Collins historically has never been affiliated with any political movement for too long. So those are all the parties in the doll, but there's two more I will talk about. First, there is the Human Dignity Alliance. The alliance is based around Senator Ronan Mullen. Mullen and the alliance are conservative, with ties to the European Christian political movement. It was formed after the 2018 referendum on abortion to oppose abortion in Ireland and promote social conservatism. While it says on its website that it will contest elections, it seems so far to have never fielded any candidates, and Mullen is the party's only notable member. Mullen is the party's only senator and was formerly a delegate to the Council of Europe. Finally, the last party I will talk about is Independence for Change, or I4C. I4C seems to be less of an organized political party and more of a collection of socialist independents who use the label to indicate their political leanings. They used to have a couple of TDs, but they all either left or lost their seats. They do have a couple of local councillors and do send two members to EU Parliament, Mick Wallace and Claire Daly who both sit in the left of EU Parliament Group. They tend to end up in the news due to their views on Russia, China, and authoritarian left-wing governments, typically taking an anti-American and anti-NATO tone, while also defending the actions of anti-Western states and groups. So those are the parties of Ireland. To summarize, there is Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, the two main conservative parties in Ireland, with their origins on different sides of the Irish Civil War. Then there's a variety of left-wing outfits, ranging from the Establishment Labour Party, the Nationalistic Sinn Féin, the Environmentalist Green Party, and the Trotskyist-inspired PBPS. It seems there's a lot of dissatisfaction with the two major parties, and it's possible in the coming years they may eventually fail to form a government and have to live under a government headed by a party outside the traditional political class, most likely Sinn Féin. What will happen to Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael in this event is unclear. Some have suggested they might merge, maybe they have to move either right or left, or maybe one will overtake the other. And then there is a question of how will all the other parties in Ireland react. Overall, nothing is certain except that Irish politics will likely have to change in the next couple of years. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys like the new mic setup. Hopefully it's not terrible. Uh, we'll see. The next episode is going to be a history of Canada. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. Um, recently just got a job, so that's going to take up a lot of my time. And Canada is a pretty big country, so maybe like two to three weeks, but we'll see. Then I will talk about Polish political parties and I'll have someone helping me with that. So I'm excited for that. And then I will talk about Japanese political parties. So yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.